The Honourable Member for Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker, I would like to inform you that I'll be splitting my time with the member from Laurentide Labelle. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to, be, to speak today about Bill C-13, the legislation that will allow Canada to implement the World Trade Agreement on Trade Facilitation, otherwise known as TFA. As you may know, Mr. Speaker, the TFA is the first multilateral trade agreement finalized since the establishment of the World Trade Organization in 1995. It's truly a landmark achievement. The TFA focuses on streamlining, harmonizing, and modernizing customs procedures. It has enormous potential for reducing trade costs and time, particularly in developing and least developed countries. In fact, WTO estimates that full TFA implementation has the potential to increase global merchandise exports by up to $1 trillion and could reduce global trade costs by an average of over 14%. Even the event that not all WTO members fully implement the TFA, the real world impact will be significant. Domestically, implementation of TFA will provide Canada with a unique opportunity to promote inclusive growth. It will do this by making cross-border trade easier for businesses of all sizes, particularly the SMEs. I would like to speak to you today about some of the legislative amendments that are required for Canada to join the ranks of 92 other World Trade Organization members, including EU, US, and China, who have already ratified the TFA. While Canada's custom regime is compliant with the vast majority of the provisions in the TFA, certain statutes do require amendments in order for Canada to fully implement the TFA and maintain safeguards on the health and safety of Canadians and our environment. These amendments relate to two provisions of the TFA. Article 10.8.1, rejected goods, and Article 11.8, goods in transit. Today, I would like to talk to you about amendments related to Article 11.8, goods in transit. Mr. Speaker, Article 11.8 prohibits the application of technical regulations to goods moving through a WTO member's territory from a point outside this territory to another foreign point known as goods in transit. That is to say, this provision will allow foreign goods to move through Canada, for example, from Europe to United States, without complying with our technical regulations. The transit through Canada of some goods, such as pharmaceutical drugs, cleaning products, or pesticides that do not comply with the technical regulations is currently prohibited by certain federal statutes, namely the Food and Drug Act, the Pest Control Product Act, the Radiation Emitting Device Act, and the Canadian Environmental Protection Act, 1999. While most importers are aware of the prohibitions on the transit of under unregistered or unauthorized products, from time to time, companies do request one-off permission to transit such products through Canada. Such activities are expressively prohibited by legislative or regulatory requirements and are routinely denied. Mr. Speaker, preventing products that do not comply with technical regulations from trading, from transitioning through Canada can be considered a trade barrier. This is because the health and safety of Canadians and the environment can in fact be protected in an equally effective and less trade restrictive manner. The legislative amendments proposed in this bill will specify, specify that Canada's technical regulation do not apply to goods in transit through Canada as long as certain requirements to protect, to protect health, safety, and environment are met. 
More specifically, Bill C-13 includes requirements designated to mitigate the risk that certain goods in transit could be diverted in the Canadian market or compromise the health and safety of Canadians or the environment as a result of accidents or spills. For example, labeling requirement for certain goods in transit will enable inspectors, border officers, handlers, and sellers to distinguish between goods destined for import and those just passing through. Such labeling could denote the origin, intended destination, and product safety and handling procedure for goods in transit. Mr. Speaker, by implementing the proposed amendments to the Food and Drug Act, the Pest Control Product Act, the Radiation Emitting Device Act, and the Canadian Environmental Protection Act 1999, Canada will improve the flow of goods and services to its border. Mr. Speaker, the world is more connected than ever before, yet all too often outdated and uncoordinated customs procedures to slow down the movement of goods and raises trade cost. Bill C-13 will enable Canada to facilitate custom procedures at home. The TFA will do the same around the world and bring considerable economic benefits to Canada and other World Trade Organization members. Mr. Speaker, I support this bill and all the benefit it would bring to Canadians. More specifically, I support it because it would benefit the many small and medium enterprises in Richmond Hill. My writing, such as those in construction industry, manufacturing, pharmaceutical, service delivery, agriculture, transport, and others. Richmond Hill, although a small suburban town, has huge business and export and import potential. And residents of Richmond Hill can stand to significantly benefit from removing these trade barriers. I urge the honorable members to support this bill, which will enable Canada to do its part to bring the agreement into force and ensure the health and safety of Canadians and the environment remains protected. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.